Welcome to today's live feed. We have something incredibly exciting for you guys today, and I'm willing to bet that many of you haven't actually seen this animal here at the zoo. We're talking naked mole rats today. So these are incredible little creatures that have so many amazing characteristics, and they are some of the most interesting animals to look at too, because they're let's be honest they're a little bit weird <laughs> but it's so so fun so while we get things going here um, let us know that you're here we'll give some shout outs and say hello to people this morning we have a very special shout out we have to give though Mary Beth I'll let you do that I just want to say happy birthday Pierce my grandson is six today and he lives in Washington State Awesome, happy birthday, Pierce. We hope you have an amazing day. And let's see, who else we have here today? Hi, Athena and Caden. Hi, Carissa and Noah. Hey, Ann. Hi, Gavin and Grayson in Kansas City. Good morning, Ruth and Napoleon. Hi, Ophelia. Let's see, hi, Rufus, Ethan and Blake in Michigan, Logan and Emma. Good morning, Anthony and Esmeralda. Hey, Tom and Catherine. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in. Hi, McKinley and Logan. Oh, it's Amanda's birthday today, too. Hi, Amanda. Happy birthday. And Charlie in Michigan, hello. Oh, my goodness, look how cute. <laughs> this is Rufus as This well. is Rufus. Oh, I love it. Kim Possible. Wow, does that bring back some memories. I love it. All right, let's see who else we got here. Hi, Davin and Evan, Wyatt and Remy, um, Jennifer and Kai. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Hey, Rowan and Lincoln in Greytown. Thanks for joining us. That's right next door to Genoa, where I'm from. That's very cool. Hi, Carly. And hi, Lane and Ella, Elizabeth and Oak Harbor. Good morning to Wendy. And the Matta kids, thanks for joining us. Hi, Jade and Tegan. Hi, Drew and Donna. And Mary Beth's grandson, Kelly, is here too. <laughs> Wonderful. Andrew and Fostoria. And, oh, and we've gotten some nice birthday wishes there for Pierce. So how cool. Yeah. Happy sixth birthday, Pierce. We're excited. All right, guys, we are going to go ahead and get started here. As you can see, we are in a little room in the, actually in the elephant barn. And if you guys haven't been, haven't paid that much attention to what else is going on in that building, you probably missed the naked mole rats. So this is gonna be really exciting to bring you something that a lot of you haven't seen today. But before we get started, we always wanna remind you that we are here every weekday at 10.30 a.m. doing these Facebook Lives. You guys wrote in yesterday on our social post for National Zoo Lovers Day about all the things that you want to see, and we have taken notes. So stay tuned. We have an amazing month of live feeds coming up, and we are still planning for the future. So we will get in all of those requests, we promise. And check us out. If you haven't, if you've been missing any of these, go to our YouTube page. We're archiving everything there in one easy place for you to find. And of course, go to ToledoZoo.org for all of the ways that you can connect with us while we're not able to be together here at the zoo. If you're able, please help us continue to care for our animals and sustain our zoo. You can donate during our live feeds with the donate button. You can go to ToledoZoo.org slash donate, or you can go to our Facebook fundraiser. And also, Meals. I know dinner time has been quite the struggle for a lot of us lately. We're thinking, you know, what new options do we have or we're just plain tired of our own cooking? Let the zoo help you out. We've got family meals on the go. This week we're doing chicken wings or chicken chunks with macaroni and cheese. It's delicious macaroni and cheese. And your other options are fajitas, beef or chicken. Go to ToledoZoo.org, sign up. You can get pick it up tomorrow night. We do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so place your order for tomorrow now. And you got dinner done. Our food is amazing, and all you have to do is drive up, pick it up, and take it home and enjoy it. 
And of course, our education classes are still going on. So many new virtual experiences going all around the zoo, exploring horticulture and animal training and all kinds of stuff. So check it all out at ToledoZoo.org slash virtual. All right, now, we have kept you guys waiting long enough. We are going to talk to Mary Beth about naked mole rats, and then they're going to make their dramatic entrance. She has a few fun facts to start us out with and then kind of talk us through what we're going to do here today. Okay, great. So the zoo has a colony of uh, naked mole rats and we have 40 of them and they are a very long-lived mammal and they are, does anybody know where they're from? Anybody? Let's check our comments here, see if we can get anybody to guess where these little naked mole rats are native to. Mm, nothing yet. All right, I think you're gonna have to tell us, Mary Beth. Well, naked mole rats are native to Africa, the continent of Africa, and they're only found in three countries, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Somalia. And so that's why they're in the elephant barn because they share the same region. And they're found underground. And so that's why they have a lot of interesting qualities. And this book that I have shows a cartoon of what it looks like underneath. And so they have these little uh, burrows and dens, and then they work together to dig out the dirt. And then when the dirt comes out, it's called a dirt volcano. And so they have different jobs. They're eusocial animal, animals, which means they're like a bee. And so the queen, is the only one to give birth. And here's a little picture of what a, a colony looks like with a baby in it. And so they dig underground and they find these roots to eat and they work together and we're gonna talk about that. But I just thought it'd be really cool to have a job called volcanoer. <laughs> so we've got diggers, sweepers, volcanoers. I think volcano is probably the coolest job title ever, right? <laughs> right. That's awesome. All okay. right, and you're going to give them some food today. You wanna to talk to us oh, about sure. what they eat? Sure. So this would be a typical diet for a day for the naked mole rats. And it consists of some kale, some carrot, some turnip, some uh, chopped yam. This is rodent block and this is called a, a chow ball that has some baby rice cereal in it. There's some white potato in there too. So we're trying to make uh, kind of like, you see how these roots would grow underground. So a yam stores its energy in the root. So there would be like, this is a turnip, there would be like a plant growing up above the surface, kind of like that. Well, the naked mole rat, this is the root, would be digging along and it would find that and chew on it and eat it. And sometimes they chew right through, but, and they try not to kill the plant. They just use the food and they may stay around the area for a long time if it's a really big root. Now in Africa, they don't have the exact same kind of um, plants that we have but this is a good substitution and, and it'll help you uh, understand. All right, now the naked mole rats are ready to make their dramatic entrance, okay. right? <laughs> ready. All right, so Mary Beth is going to open this up and you guys are gonna get to see them all scurry around through their little man-made burrows <laughs> we have here for them. No, they're not scurrying as much as I thought they would. Oh, we were, we were hopeful <laughs> there. but little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where they are. All okay. right. Oh, we have so we have some scurrying on top of each other down here on the bottom. Yeah. There's a lot of them in this den right down Oh, there, there they go. All right, guys. So talk to us, Mary Beth, how many naked mole rats do we have here at the zoo? So we have 40, and naked mole rats are different sizes. So this one's kind of a small one. They weigh uh, around 40 to 50 grams usually, except for the queen who's much larger. And so the smaller ones are kind of like housekeepers and they do some digging and cleaning and carrying food to the nest. 
They do have a few little hairs and bristles. You can see his whiskers. And also on their back feet, they have some little bristles that they use for sweeping. It's like a little broom that they sweep the dirt with. And you can touch them if you'd like, Kim. Oh my gosh, of course I do. Oh, oh, they're so cute, you guys. They have little wrinkly skin here. It's very soft mm -hmm. though, and it's almost translucent. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's wrinkly is it helps them underground to be able to turn around in tight places and also um, for heating and cooling. So these animals are ectotherms. And what that means, it's like they're cold blooded like a snake. So they adjust to their temperature of the surroundings. And in the tunnel, it stays typically around 80 degrees. So we try to keep our room around 78 to 82 degrees. And when they're cold, like we have a heat lamp, so they can go to the heated end. And if they get hot, they'll go to this other end where they were today when we found them, they were in the cooler end. And we also keep it about 70% humidity in here. And that's because naked mole rats do not drink water. So that's kind of unusual. So we have to make sure that our dens, or the little nest boxes, stay moist. And they're gonna get all their moisture from the food that I showed you. I'm gonna put this one back, and we're gonna look probably for the queen, but I'm guessing she might have gone to the big long tube. So sometimes if we have to move the colony, or once a year we do what's called a mole rat roundup. <laughs> we catch up all the animals and the veterinarians look at each one. They, they check their heartbeat. They um, listen to their respirations. And so we just did that last month. We make sure that they're all there because we can't really count them every day. We're just checking to make sure they're secure in their environment and that nobody got out. And so we do that. Um, and when we have to catch them up like that, lots of times they'll scurry right to this long tube where it's harder for us to get them out. So <laughs> you can tell they're, they're actually pretty smart little animals. And um, you were telling us before we went on camera that these guys can go the same speed forward and backwards. We're seeing some of these guys go backwards pretty quick. Talk to us about that. Right, so in the tunnels, when they're digging, they'll go over and under each other. They can also turn around in the tunnels. So back here, there's one that's going over. And so usually the dominant animal goes over and the subordinate animal goes underneath. And when they're sweeping, they'll, take the, they'll have the little guys carrying the dirt up to the surface underneath and the big guys are busting the rock-like dirt and busting it up. And then the little guys are hauling it out and, uh, underneath the big guys. Oh my goodness. All right, we're getting some cool questions here. So let's, we'll start firing away at you. Okay. All right, so. I was gonna try to catch a bigger one. Morgan wants to know, what is their Here's predator and their prey? So naked mole rats can be preyed upon by snakes. Uh, there's one called the rufous beak snake. And so the bigger uh, naked mole rats. Actually, this one's a little bit bigger. Some of them are soldiers, and they hang out at the t near the top. And if they encounter danger, they have communications. So naked mole rats have 17 to 18 different vocalizations, and um, that's because they're social. So a lot of rodents, which naked mole rats are, don't have that many vocalizations. Oh, there he's showing off for the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> and so what they do is uh, they'll have an uh, alert, they'll hiss, they, they chirp. And so those soldiers will bite the snake and try to prevent them from entering and getting to the queen. They try to protect the queen. And he's making some little it, it noises yeah. right now. And also um, you'll see that their ears are tiny. So they don't need a directional ear like a donkey does because they don't have, they're only gonna go forwards or backwards underground. Uh, so they rely partly on their sense of smell and uh, the 
the colony has a smell and they roll uh, in their odor so they know who's who and they, um, they can't see real well, but they are not blind. People ask me that. Uh, so they just have little tiny eyes. Well, they're in the dark underground, so they don't really need 20-20 vision. They almost uh, look like little pinpricks mm -hmm. for their eyes. They're very tiny mm -hmm. there. And that answers Sue's question of do they have good vision mm -hmm. and Jennifer's question of do they have eyes. So there we go, two, two questions down. And if you look at his mouth, his uh, lips seal behind the teeth. The teeth are not sealed into the mouth. Of course, they have more than just those two uh, canines there, or incisors, excuse me. Uh, those are for digging. They're like little chisels for digging. And uh, so the mouth is actually seals behind there. That's so they do not eat dirt. So if you were digging dirt with your mouth, you wouldn't want to be eating. No. And McKinley asks, why do they not have any hair? So that is another adaptation. So they don't need the hair to stay warm underground like that. And it would actually be a hindrance to them uh, because it would attract fleas and little bugs and things like that. So it's better for them to not have it. And they use those little bristles that they do have to feel their way around. They feel vibrations, they feel the edge of the tunnel. And like I said before, on their feet, they use the back feet to sweep the dirt. And the, uh, um, oh, what was I gonna say about that? Um, so they're the only species of mole rats. So there are other mole rats that do have hair, but the naked mole rats do not. Oh, we're watching this guy do somersaults too. They're, they're pretty, uh, <laughs> Pretty athletic little creatures mm -hmm. here. Memphis, age four, wants to know where can he find these animals at the zoo? They are in the same building as the African elephants in, on Tembo Trail. And sometimes during the summer, <clears throat> the elephants are outside and people will start walking towards the building and they'll say, oh, there's nothing in there. And I always say, wait, there's naked mole rats. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to advocate for the naked mole rats because they're like the underdog and they're pretty cool animals once you learn about them. They are really cool creatures. So you mentioned that they don't drink water. Taylor and Malia want to know then how do they stay hydrated? So they're able to get all the moisture they need from the food that we give them or that they find in the wild. So they live in the desert where there isn't a bunch of water pooled around. Uh, they would find it in the root of the plant. That's how the plant survives. But the um, mole rat is able to utilize that um, moisture from the plant to survive in the, in the desert. And it, in a way, they're digging up the soil, aerating the soil, which helps plants as well. Very cool. And Rachel asks, what is their lifespan? Oh, a good question. I was just going to talk about that. Naked mole rats are of particular interest to scientists because they have a very long lifespan. And our queen and a couple of the other ones are actually 27 years old. Wow. So we got them in 1993. And I was lucky enough to be one of the keepers that took care of them way back then. And they came from Africa. And so they can live as long as 35, I have read in a book. And a lot of lab animals, such as mice and rats, may only live to be two or three. That's because they get cancer. And naked mole rats are fairly resistant to cancer. And part of it, it's pretty scientific, but a part of it is because they can live with very little oxygen. So they can live with a high percentage of carbon dioxide underground. And they can actually survive up to 18 minutes with zero oxygen. Wow. Um, but typically it's just a lower percentage than what you or I would be breathing. And so that um, helps them so that they are less, less problem with cancer. And that's to do with um, oxidation, which is kind of complicated. Uh, but we've had one of our many mole rats did die of cancer, and it was some type of bone cancer. Mm. Uh, but that's very rare. 
They also don't tend to get heart disease. So that's why a lot of researchers are really interested in knowing more about naked mole rats and having them uh, because they can learn things that would help humans to uh, find out why they don't age. They do, they do not age at the way humans do over time. And you mentioned that we're one of the few zoos that actually exhibit snake and mole rats. Right. I'm not sure how many zoos there are in the country, but I do know that a lot, I've had several zoos contact us and we tried to help them with designing their exhibits. So there's some key things that you need to know. And one thing is we have to keep people back. So we do have a guardrail around the front side of the exhibit. And that's because they're so sensitive to vibration. So if uh, kids or parents are accidentally like kicking on the wall and just not even thinking about it, that can really disturb the nest because in the wild that would be dangerous and it could be like an elephant or a earthquake or something like that and it would totally disturb the nest. The other thing is their uh, tubes can be no more than 25 to 30% of an angle. So they're not able to go like straight up in the air. Sure. And you mentioned too that they don't really feel pain. Right, so they have limited pain receptors and sometimes you'll see them dragging each other around by the tail and you'd think, oh gosh, that must hurt. But for some reason, they have fewer pain receptors and so that doesn't bother them. And when we were talking about the chambers, so, so this is our typical food chamber. So I'll just show you where we had our, uh, our little dish of food. And so I would, every day I'll come in, check on them, turn on their lights. We check their temperature and humidity and we would take out the old food and throw it away. And then we'll put the new food in And so then the other thing we do is we mist the top of the chamber. And so by doing that, it keeps it a little moister in there for the animals. And we just have some little lights and the lights are really just so that people can see in there. Of course, now it's hard for Corey to see. <laughs> <laughs> huh. And Alba asks, how big do they get? So the, um, the queen has been as heavy as like 70 grams. So it's kind of hard. Uh, we don't use grams a lot, but so a gram weighs about as much as a raisin. So, uh, and they, the longest one gets about that long. All right, and Sarah asked, does the queen become the queen just because of her size or how do they determine that? Well, so we have about 20 females and 20 males uh, and then, but it can, it's not necessarily always even. The queen fights with the other available females to see which one is more dominant. And when she wins the battle, she produces these hormones that makes her available to mate and have the babies. And that suppresses the hormones in the other animals and they are not able to mate. Interesting. And she will then grow longer as an adult, which is very rare for mammals to do that. And I was also going to tell you like these small little chambers here are toilet chambers. So they're very clean animals and they will go to the restroom in these little dead end areas and that keeps, keeps the rest of their um, area nice and clean. And Nathan wants to know, how do they defend themselves? Well, they defend themselves with those big sharp teeth and they can really bite. And I know that from personal experience. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bit twice, once holding one for a, a veterinary procedure and uh, one other time when I was new and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and Brody asks, it leads right into his question, of how many teeth do they have? Oh, that's a good question. I am not certain about that. Yeah, 
That's all right. We, that'd be something cool to Google, guys, if you can find that out. Let's see. Um, Colton, Cassidy, and Isabel ask, how many times a day do they eat? So Nick and Mole Rats in the wild, they don't have a cycle like we do because they're always underground. So they might be active all day long with breaks for sleeping in there. Uh, we have them on a light cycle because we want people to see them and then we just turn the lights off at night. But they um, basically can eat or sleep in short bouts all the time. And that leads into Emily's question, where do they sleep? Is there a specific room for that like there is for the bathroom and for feeding? Right. So they can determine where their nest is. And like I was saying earlier, in the wintertime especially, they'll sleep a lot over this blue, under this blue light that just gives a little bit more heat. And then we also have this one off exhibit uh, nest and sometimes they'll be in there. And you can see we give them boxes to chew on. So that's a form of enrichment and they're chewing on the book of the month in, in that one. <laughs> And they also like these boxes that have like a little moon roof. And they'll chew on little cardboard tubes or will uh, have egg cartons or uh, paper bags and uh, glove boxes and all different things. This is uh, cardboard that a uh, light bulb came in. And they'll totally shred that. Uh, we also give them some brows so their teeth continue to grow so they kind of need things to chew on so they'll chew the bark off from different types of brows. This is forsythia. We usually get mulberry as a typical branch that we get for them. And how fast can they move? We're seeing them oh, scurry here. Gosh, how quick I, do they go? I don't know exactly the answer to that one. Here's the queen over here. Oh, good. We were just going to ask if we could maybe <laughs> so see that her. that longer one under there is the queen. There you go, guys. And that answers a few questions there. You did get to see the queen of our colony. And as Mary Beth said, she's longer than all of the other mole rats here. She's kind of stretched, saggy baggy a little bit. Um, so we <laughs> think that she may have had as many as 900 to 1,000 babies in her lifetime. Wow. And if she comes in the box, I'll catch her, but she's pretty, pretty crafty. She'll probably just stay right in the, in the long tube where it's hard to get her out. McKinley wants to know if they're rare to find in the wild. So they are only found in the three countries that I mentioned before but they are considered of least concern as far as conservation goes. So they're not really targeted by humans or anything. They are pretty safe and uh, their numbers are pretty plentiful at this time. And Dawn, their habitat is located actually inside the elephant barn. If you go into the indoor viewing in Tembo Trail, you can turn to your left as you walk in the door and you can check out the naked mole rats. And oh, how awesome. We get to check out the queen here, guys. Uh, Mary Beth was able to get her as she was going into one of the uh, little sleeping boxes over here. So you can see she is much longer than the ones that we had um, looked at up close before. And tell us again how many babies you think she's had. We think she's had probably 900 to 1,000 in her lifetime. She, wow. um, they control their own population, so they s kind of stop raising them, uh, they, and she has not reproduced in a few years, and that may be age-related, but when she was pregnant, they're almost see-through, and you could actually see some of the babies through their skin, and they have between, usually around 15 babies at a time, they can have as many as 20, uh, and some of them have little transponders for identification and things. And I think she has a tattoo maybe. But um, so she's still the boss though. Oh, there's a big and yawn happening there. That's like a little display of, see my teeth. 
and I'll still see her disciplining some of the other animals. Uh, they'll hiss and bite if she, she's the boss lady, you know. She's the boss, yep. And this leads well into Kate's question of what happens when the queen passes away? So we think what will happen is that one of the other large females will take over and without the queen there to suppress her hormones, then she'll become reproductive. And it may be that we have a couple of them that uh, start and they'll fight over the job. And I'm gonna put the queen back. Uh, so I read that the, um, she pooped on my hand. So. Oh, how nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have read that the naked mole rats, and there she goes, um, <laughs> that they will s start having jobs as young as three months old. And so even the young animals can carry food to the nest and start sweeping. And so that's, um, they work kind of together and that helps them in the harsh environment that they live in, it helps them to survive. So I just wanted to say like at this time, and when you're at home, you can help your mom or dad. When you're, even though you're young, you could still like maybe carry some laundry or you know help wash the dishes or uh, you know get some food from the fridge for your mom and and things like that. You you know all jobs are important. So you know like the naked mole rats, we've got the soldiers and the workers up here and the cleaners around the nest and everything. Um, but all their jobs are important and they all contribute to the survival of the colony, so. So cool. And Laura asks, do they, when they grow up, do they go off on their own or do they stay with the group? So most of the mole rats will just stay with the group. And I was reading that there are some individuals that will not, they will strike off on their own and find another group. And that's kind of a dangerous position to be in because there's, they can also get killed by a raptor, such as you know a big eagle. Um, so that time above ground is very dangerous. And then to get into a new group is also dangerous, but that helps to spread the genes around um, so they're not as inbred. So there are some that do that. Oh, good. And Emma asks, is there a certain chamber where the queen has babies? Normally they would, yes. They would have, uh, and for us it's usually been the warm chamber where we keep the extra light. And they'll typically, you'll find a lot of them in there and the babies will be crawling around with the, the adults. And how big are babies when they're born? So they're only about as big as the end of your pinky. So they only would weigh about one to two grams, like one or two raisins. Wow, this has been amazing. Um, talk to us about why you love working with naked mole rats. <laughs> What's the draw to them? <laughs> That's a good question. I think it's, um, I, I'm, I used to, when I started I worked with the elephants, okay? So Elephants are big, they get a lot of attention, everybody knows about them, they got a funny nose, you know. Um, but not everybody knows about the naked mole rats. So several years ago I started working in the small mammal department and I got all the oddball animals. And it's like the little island of misfit toys. I've got the naked mole rats, the Tasmanian devils, and the otters and the dingoes, and I've had all different animals to take care of. I had some marmosets and tamarins and and it's just, uh, it's just really interesting, you know, to learn about these animals that not everybody knows about. And so, like right now, I've got a little competition going with my buddies, the elephant keepers, to see who can get the most likes for their animals. Yeah, and <laughs> you guys, the snakes yesterday are currently holding the record. <laughs> so we'll keep all of you guys posted on that. Um, we're getting a few questions here about babies. And you said, we don't have any babies right now. When was the last time we had babies here at the zoo? Um, that's a good question. We had some about five years ago, but they did not survive. Um, so 
The last time that we had some that survived was probably about 12 years ago. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much, and thank you for sharing your misfit <laughs> animals with us. Um, I think it's really cool, and that's been our goal of doing these live feeds for you guys, is to move all around the zoo and talk to you about all of the cool animals that we have. Not all of them are big and furry and fluffy and cuddly. Some of them are naked mole rats, but they're still amazing, and they have all these cool characteristics and adaptations that help them survive and thrive. And we want to share all of that with you. So keep tuning in, keep joining us. Don't forget about our education classes, our meals on the go, and all of the ways that you can still stay connected with us during this time. Mary Beth is going to make another appearance next week with some more of those misfit animals that mm -hmm. she was uh, joking about just now. So tune back in. Thank you guys so much. And we hope that you learned a lot about naked mole rats and you'll check them out the next time you're here at the zoo.